Every day, our body performs several important functions such as respiration, digestion, excretion to name a few. Of these processes, digestion is a vital one as it provides energy to the body by converting complex food into smaller, simpler and absorbable molecules. The digestion process begins the moment we put food into the oral cavity through our mouth. The teeth, present in the oral cavity, masticate the food while the tongue mixes it with saliva, which is rich in electrolytes such as sodium, potassium, chloride and bicarbonate ions and various enzymes such as salivary amylase and lysozyme. Each of the salivary components has its own function. For instance, the salivary amylase, a carbohydrate splitting enzyme, initiates the process of digestion in the oral cavity by hydrolyzing nearly 30% of food starch into a disaccharide or simple sugar called maltose. Whereas lysozyme acts as an antibacterial agent and kills microbes present in food substances, thereby preventing infections. Mucus, on the other hand, lubricates the food and helps the masticated food particles stick together to form a bolus. Thereafter, the bolus passes through the pharynx and then into the esophagus by the process of swallowing or deglutition. Once the bolus enters the esophagus, a series of wave-like muscular contractions known as peristalsis pushes it down the esophagus and towards the gastroesophageal sphincter, a one-way valve that conducts the bolus from the esophagus into the stomach. The bolus remains in the stomach for nearly four to five hours where it mixes with the gastric juices secreted by the gastric glands. These glands are stimulated by the gastrin hormone and inhibited by the enterogastrin hormone and consist of mainly three types of cells. Mucous neck cells which secrete mucus, peptic or chief cells which secrete the proenzyme pepsinogen and parietal or oxyntic cells which secrete hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor, a type of microprotein that absorbs vitamin B complex. The churning of the stomach walls mixes these gastric gland secretions with the bolus, forming a pulp-like substance called chyme. During the process of churning, a highly concentrated hydrochloric acid secreted by the gastric glands converts the proenzyme pepsinogen present in the chyme into an active proteolytic enzyme called pepsin. Interestingly, in spite of the presence of the hydrochloric acid in the lumen of the stomach, the stomach's mucosal epithelium remains relatively unscathed as the mucus and bicarbonates in the gastric juices lubricate and protect it from excoriation or wear off. The chyme from the stomach passes through the pyloric sphincter and enters the duodenum the first part of the small intestine. Here, the movements generated by the muscularis layer of the duodenum causes the chyme to mix with pancreatic juice and bile. The secretions of the hepatopancreatic gland. These secretions contain different enzymes and pigments that help in the further breakdown of food molecules. Bile, for example, contains bile pigments such as bilirubin and biliverdin, bile salts, cholesterol and phospholipids. On the other hand, pancreatic juice consists of inactive enzymes such as trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, procarboxypeptidases, amylases, lipases, 
and nucleases. These inactive enzymes are activated by trypsin and chymotrypsin, which are produced when enterokinase, an enzyme secreted by the intestinal mucosa, acts on inactive trypsinogen to form active trypsin and also converts inactive chymotrypsinogen into active chymotrypsin. The bile and pancreatic secretions now start converting complex molecules of the chyme into simpler forms. The proteolytic enzymes trypsin, chymotrypsin and carboxypeptidase for instance act upon the proteins, proteoses and peptones and convert them into smaller peptides. Similarly, the pancreatic amylase hydrolyze the carbohydrates into simple sugars or disaccharides. On the other hand, enzymes such as lipases break down fats into diglycerides and monoglycerides with the help of bile, whereas nucleases acts on nucleic acids and forms nucleotides and nucleosides. In the final steps of digestion, the end products synthesized by the action of bile and pancreatic juice are further converted into absorbable molecules by intestinal juice or succus entericus that's secreted by the walls of the intestine. This juice consists of mucus secreted by the goblet cells in the small intestine's mucosal epithelium and secretions of the brush border cells of the mucosa and contains several enzymes such as disaccharides, dipeptidases, lipases and nucleosidases. The simple substances produced in the duodenum are absorbed in the jejunum and the ileum regions of the small intestine. On the other hand, the undigested and unabsorbed substances, called feces, enter the cecum region of the large intestine through the ileocecal valve. The feces then travel through the colon, which absorbs water, minerals and certain drugs in the feces. The colon also secretes mucus which adheres the undigested waste particles together and also lubricates them for easy passage. The fecal matter enters the rectum, where it is temporarily stored till defecation. Interestingly, for proper coordination of different parts of the gastrointestinal tract, its activities are under hormonal and neural control. For instance, local hormones produced by the gastric and intestinal mucosa manage the secretion of digestive juices. On the other hand, the sight, smell or presence of food in the oral cavity leads to saliva secretion. Similarly, Gastric and intestinal secretions such as pepsin and hydrochloric acid are also stimulated by neural signals. Neural mechanisms can also moderate the muscular activities of different parts of the alimentary canal, both local and through the central nervous system. Thus, different parts of the alimentary canal and digestive glands help us to digest the food we eat.